journey drives the number one court. If you're able to be in a position where you're pushing the envelope of known performance. Fifteen cars have already dropped off trying to keep up with the bright red board. And you're able to get outside the box and uh, be successful. That's a uh, very gratifying thing when you can do it. There's the checkered flag. It's an all-American win. I kept trying to do that. Dan Gurney has done it all. Driver, owner, engineer, and manufacturer. Born and raised on Long Island, the son of a metropolitan opera star and grandson of an inventive ball bearing manufacturer, Gurney might never have expected to make a career in racing, let alone become one of the top drivers. But racing was in his blood. When his family moved west to Riverside, California in 1948, the young car guy found himself in hot rod heaven. His first race was in 1955, and within four years, Dan earned a coveted spot on the Ferrari team. It was a brilliant start to a driving career that spanned 312 events in 20 countries, with 98 trips to the podium, 51 of those to the top step. Gurney was the first to win all four of the major motorsport categories, Grand Prix, IndyCar, NASCAR, and sports car. He earned a reputation for skill, professionalism, and fair play among his fellow drivers. I have an awful lot of respect for Dan on the track and off. He, he's a guy that you drive right up next to any time and know that he was going to make every effort not to, not to touch you or, or uh, bump you or anything like that. He was a, he was a great ethical driver and uh, I liked racing against him a lot. In 1962, Ford Motor Company chose Dan Gurney to premiere its Mustang One at Watkins Glen and Laguna Seca, kickstarting Ford's total performance campaign. The campaign climaxed at Le Mans in 1967, when Gurney and A.J. Foyt drove a Ford Mark IV to victory at racing's most prestigious event. Gurney's cool, competent style was well-suited to that 24-hour race of attrition. The brilliant thing was the way Dan Gurney managed A.J. Foyt because A.J. didn't have the experience on road courses, but naturally their ego, a race driver's ego, will not let somebody else go faster than they went. So Gurney just went at a normal pace all during practice. He worked with AJ, he showed him the ins and outs and never got in competition with AJ to see how fast they go because Le Mans is an endurance contest. With victory secured, calm gave way to spontaneous joy as Gurney sprayed his celebratory champagne all over everyone within reach. And while we didn't know it then, that was the start of a tradition repeated in winner's circles and locker rooms ever since. It was, in its own way, an innovation, and innovation seemed second nature to Dan Gurney. He brought Ford and Lotus together back in 1962, convinced that a big American engine mounted in the rear of a light European chassis could revolutionize Indianapolis. Jim Clark proved him right in 1965. Certain that the United States could build a car equal to anything coming out of Italy, Germany, or Great Britain, Gurney formed All-American Racers in 1964 and did just that, patriotically calling his cars Eagles. And his win in Belgium in 1967 made him the only American driver to win a Grand Prix race in a car of his own construction. His respect for the sport included the first-hand knowledge that it's a dangerous way to make a living. Having lost too many friends, Gurney took a bold step for safety in 1968 when he introduced the full-face helmet to IndyCar and Formula One. He retired from driving in 1970 to focus on engineering. His signature achievement, the Gurney flap, came in 1971 the small strip fixed to the rear airfoil produced incredible gains in traction and speed. With Dan Gurney, I had started way back in 71 with it. We made speed beyond belief. In 1972, 
We raised the, the speed in Indianapolis by approximately 18 miles an hour, 17 point something. That's the biggest gain they've ever had in the history of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The breakthroughs continued. In 1980, AAR built the first rolling road wind tunnel in the United States, made using a belt sander and a fan. The low-slung alligator transformed motorcycles in 2002. And the radical delta wing of 2012, with half the weight, half the drag of a conventional race car, proved that AAR is still building at the cutting edge. From the young California hot rodder with a mechanical knack inherited from his grandfather, to the renaissance man of American racing, Dan Gurney transformed motorsports worldwide. His passion for racing has ignited a lasting family tradition. Four of his sons have made careers in racing. Justin is CEO. Jimmy is the senior purchasing agent. And Danny is a composite technician, each with all American racers. We should probably add Alex is a Rolex Sports Car Series champion driver. We are pretty sure scientific testing would prove racing and innovation are in the Gurney family DNA. The passion that made me want to be a driver, the, the, the one that made me want to have a team, the one that uh, made me want to manufacture cars, all of those things, I don't know uh, where it came from, but it uh, was pretty hard to stamp out. It kept growing up again through the asphalt, so to speak, and uh, it, it's still uh, very important to me. Dan Gurney, driver, engineer, innovator, and recipient of the 2014 Edison Ford Medal for Innovation.